This is the Canon 16-35 f2.8 version 2. It's an extremely old EF lens and it's what I've been using for the past year and a half for my vlogs or anything at a wide angle. As you can tell, it is massive. And that's one of the things I really didn't like about it when it comes to vlogging. I did get used to it, holding it from the barrel of the lens and putting my poor bicep to strain. But I kind of got used to it. Uh, but whenever I would give the camera to someone else, they'd be like, how on earth do you hold this all day when you're vlogging or whatever you're doing? So I finally have something that may change that. I'm shooting on it right now. This is the RF 16 millimeter prime from Canon. I have 2.8 aperture. It is a pancake lens. It is tiny. Uh, it has a crazy close focus distance. Like literally this seems like a macro lens and the quality seems to be really good. So we're gonna be testing it out in today's video. I'm gonna be vlogging with it. I'm gonna be seeing if it is a style of lens that uh, I'll use for vlogging. Now I know the drawbacks already as of right now, uh, obviously you can't zoom, it's a prime lens. When I use the 16 to 35, I could always punch into 35 millimeter. And that was good if I wanted some, you know, compression in the background, if I wanted to shoot something a bit more cinematic, uh, or if I wanted to see something a little bit further away. This is a prime lens, so obviously it can't zoom in and out, but I'm gonna see if that's really a big deal for me when I'm vlogging. I think with the quality of the R5, I can punch in a bit. Obviously it's not the same thing as zooming in, but uh, I guess I'll see as I do it. So besides the lens, there are a few gear updates that I've made. One, I've purchased two of these tube lights from Godox. Uh, these are the SL30s, I think. Um, I'm testing them out because I wanted more tube lights. I do have a big one from YN something oh, down over there, but it's kind of big and bulky and I only had one. I've wanted more than just one. So I've gotten two of these tube lights, one in my hand, other one is over there connected to the railing of my shelf. They are magnetic around the edges, which makes them really convenient, but I might do a review on them if you guys are interested because they seem to be really good. You know, they're full RGB, they have the special effects. Um, I just have them as uh, broad daylight, so yeah, looks good though. The next thing, I'm gonna unbox it right now. This was something that was recommended to me by John Bear. He does camera videos as well, and his work is really, really good. So John was saying, Chris, you know, you're vlogging a lot uh, and your style of videography would really be complemented by a switch pod. Now I've been using the Joby Gorillapod uh, 5K. I got it during the quarantine, like the heavy quarantine here in Paris. So that was early 2020 uh, is when I got this Gorillapod and it's served me since, but it is extremely frustrating to use and uh, I don't like it for vlogging. It has amazing versatility when it comes to, you know, being able to put it or attach it in weird locations. But in terms of just vlogging and filming yourself, it's not the best tool. This is what was recommended to me. Hard to get in France, but I finally got it. I think this shipped from the UK and this is the SwitchPod. But yeah, it's designed for vlogging and uh, I'm really excited about it. Right away, this is the size or the height comparison between this and the 5K. Hopefully that's not an issue, but actually I do need to connect the ball head, so that that might change. So I do want to switch to the old 60 millimeter so you can see the difference and you can tell me if you even notice any difference. First of all, I need to connect the adapter because this is an EF lens and uh, this is an RF camera. So then the lens becomes this size. Let's switch the lenses. All right, now I'm back to the OG lens. This is what I've always used. And look how tiny this thing is. It's literally, wait. It's literally like the same size as the original Nifty 50 and it is actually, it feels lighter. This does have a metal mount at the bottom, don't get me wrong, this is not cheap. It also has the control ring, it's very smooth, which also functions as a focus ring. So I can easily, you know, change my ISO or whatever setting you want uh, as you're filming, which is really awesome. And it just seems really solidly made. One thing I don't really like, and I think will be my only gripe, is the fact that the focus uh, motor moves in and out uh, as you're focusing, which I guess kind of sucks. It doesn't move that much, definitely not as much as the 50 mil. Kind of got used to, even though it sucks. So it doesn't feel cheap at all. And it's not like the focus element is wobbly at all, which is really annoying on the 50. Um, so it does still feel very compact, but the fact that it moves in and out kind of sucks, but whatever. This is the difference in sizes. This is the old 16 to 35. Um, this is the new 16. Um, obviously this zooms into 35 millimeters, so you can get extra compression if you need to or see things a little bit further away. But this plus the adapter, which is pretty much the size of this lens, becomes a heavy build for vlogging. And I think that's what this lens is gonna be a beast for. It's for vlogging or traveling when you just kind of want a wide shot. And the fact that the R5 is so crisp, I don't think I have any problems punching in if I need to, 
for any video work, especially if I shoot in 8K, but even the ultra fine 4K looks fantastic. So let's, let's switch back. All right, back to the 16. I think, I don't know why it feels wider. I feel like it just, because I'm able to hold it more comfortably outwards, where with the 16 to 35, I kind of bring my arm in a little bit just to put less strain on it. But it definitely feels like a perfect vlog setup. And regarding my last video where I talked about why the R5 really isn't a great vlogging camera, a big issue that I talked about was the fact that it is bulky, it's cumbersome. It's not comfortable really to walk around with it, especially with the 16 to 35 and the adapter and the microphone and all, it's a really big setup. This feels a lot more like a point and shoot and you're also getting the quality of the R5. So that's just a win-win and uh, I'm really excited to use this. I definitely know for a fact that it will still have the wobble. It's not really a problem with the lens itself. It's more of a problem with the camera and the IBIS situation. So it is what it is, just gotta work with what I have. So this is what my setup looks like. I have the switch pod and the R5 looks really good, feels really good in the hand. And I'm actually using the Rode Video Micro again instead of the Pro Plus. It did have some issues with my R6 where I ended up picking up this weird like radio station through like signal issues, um, but I do miss its form factor. So I'm gonna be trying it again. Hopefully it doesn't ruin my audio again. And uh, yeah. Okay guys, so final verdict. I'm editing the video and I feel like I should just summarize everything that I've talked about and make a decision. I've shot with it, I've vlogged with it a little bit, uh, but I'm already sold. I think this is gonna be my new vlogging lens. I'm on the fence uh, in terms of selling my 16 to 35, mainly because everything I do past 16 millimeters uh, is more professional work, um, where I use the 24 art lens I have, 50 millimeter prime or 85 prime, because I just like how those lenses look. And I feel like in today's time uh, where phones are getting so good, fast, sharp primes really separate our pro cameras from like phones. Uh, so I really love those lenses. Those are keepers for me. And the fact that this is so much smaller and lighter and has better autofocus in my opinion than the Canon camera uh, makes a lot of noise and it's just a bit of a, a slower process. Yes, this is an old Canon lens. So obviously the Mark III version is probably way better. This is a GOAT lens. This is a RF lens that I recommend to anyone who is shooting RF system and they need an ultra wide lens. I know a lot of people purchased the 15 to 35 because they needed a wide lens for vlogging. But that lens is enormous, extremely expensive, and extremely heavy, and it's just a cumbersome thing. And if you need the zoom range, I get it. That would be your selling point, and that would prevent you from wanting a prime like this. But for me, when I'm vlogging, I rarely zoom in too much. So the drawback of not being able to zoom in, which is pretty much the only drawback with this lens, in my opinion, does not come close to outweighing its pros, which is the lightweight, it's very, very, very sharp image, fast and reliable autofocus, control ring, and just a compact size. Throwing this on a gimbal, vlogging with it, everything, it just feels like a completely different setup when I vlog with this, uh, or, or just in general. If I shoot with this versus my 16 to 35 that I've been using for over a year and a half now. So yeah, that's my final verdict. If you do wanna pick one up, I'll have a link in the description. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I have a lot to do. I gotta watch my brother's football game now. I gotta study for some exams. I have to prepare for some presentations this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed, highly recommend it. Test it out, pretty sure you'll like it. See you guys in the next video, all right? Peace. All right, I'm gonna be picking up a friend of mine from the train station right here. He's an OG friend of mine, someone who I haven't seen in such a long time, but uh, he's in town for like a day, but uh, he just arrived at the train station, so I gotta go find him. This is such a small setup. I'm not uncomfortable vlogging with this. Yes. <laughs> you gotta do something about this hair. Oh what? What are you saying? <laughs> it's about it blazers, like, bro? Yeah, you do the blazers? What's wrong with my hair? <laughs> it looks like a pineapple. <laughs> like a bad one, too. Oh. <laughs> bah, on sort ici, ça va? Yeah. C'était um, bien? Well, it was long, but. Like usual, I mean.